this is Duke University. So I'll start off with a Papa Hernstein Smith anecdote from a conference we both attended at the University of Pennsylvania many years ago. And she was a faculty member there. She gave an elegant talk, as one might, of course, expect and predict, making some of the points that have been attributed to her by previous <coughs> today and making them with the clarity that you all recognize. And then someone stood up and presented as a counter argument a warmed over version of everything that she had just critiqued and finished his presentation with a flourish as, and what do you make of that? And she says, and I quote, I thought that I had grounded into dust beneath my feet. <laughs> to add that that, in fact, in her writing, is not Barbara's usual style, <laughs> although it is a style which she can obviously employ and deploy at will and at the moment. In fact, her style, and here I'm going to continue some of the remarks on her style that uh, Casper began with, her style is an extremely <coughs> interesting part of her argument. And uh, Nancy mentioned this new book of mine, How to Write a Sentence, which contains uh, examples from many authors. The sentence that I'm about to read from uh, Barbara's Scandalous Knowledge could easily uh, have been one of the sentences uh, that I presented uh, for admiration and perhaps uh, emulation. Uh, I'll just read it. Thus the mind may be seen as a name given to a historically shifting set of heterogeneous phenomena and notions, ranging from introspective experiences and observable patterns of behavior to the various faculties, processes, and interior mechanisms that, at various times and in various formal and informal discourses, parentheses, philosophical, ethical, legal, <laughs> medical, and so forth, end of parentheses, have been posited or assumed to explain them, period. Now, what I like about that sentence and why I say that it tells us a lot uh, about not only uh, Barbara's writing style, uh, but about the thought that she uh, hopes and indeed uh, can be set, hopes that that style accomplishes, uh, is, uh, and I, is, is that a sentence like this explains why Many of those who begin with positions that she uh, then demolishes, or at least unpacks uh, in a critical way, will never be able to hear her. And they will never be able to hear her, in part before, of course, they will never be able to get through one of these sentences. <laughs> they will never be able to get through one of these sentences, because what they will be waiting for and expecting is a strong, finite assertion of something or other, and they're never going to get it. And they will become impatient and walk away and then report some reductive version of what she was saying. And this happens over and over again. In other words, uh, what, the style, what the style is, in effect, um, is a succession of, mon of momentary assertions, each of which is in danger of asserting too much. And therefore, even as it is delivered, it is qualified, and not only by the assertions that follow, but by the, but by the serial qualifications performed by parentheses, italics, boldface, of the qualifying qualifications. The style then raises and answers the question of what the reader should or can take away from the experience of this prose. And the answer to that question is an overarching caution about the making of claims 
and at the same time an invitation to investigate and live for a while within a multiplicity of claims. That's what this sentence does, and that's what her work does, among many other things that have been uh, described and justly praised today. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.